Washington. Doug Graff is the chief of fire protection for the Oregon Department of Forestry. Uh, chief Graff, know you're busy. Thanks for your time this morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Let's just start with the latest. What's the situation on the ground right now? Situation on the ground is west of the Cascades is covered in smoke, and that actually puts a cap on fire activity. So we have a great opportunity and have had this opportunity for the past 72 hours to, to stack, construct, and fire line, anchor into a safe spot. Uh, we've got hundreds of miles of fire line to construct with dozers and hand crews on many of these large fires west of the, cas uh, the Cascade, Cascade Crest. On the east side of the Cascade, uh, winds are still blowing, and, and we're getting pushed out on a number of fires on that mm -hmm. side of the hill. So, Chief, do you have any, does, does it give you any idea when you, you look at these more favorable conditions, and yet you've got the more trying ones, when you can expect any kind of containment? Uh, we'll shift resources accordingly, and they're pouring in from across the country. Uh, containment is going to be a long time coming on these fires. We've got over 100,000 acres in each of these fires. In total, uh, close to a million acres burning in the state of Oregon. Mm -hmm. uh, really, the rains uh, that set in uh, early October uh, will put containment to close on these fires. Uh, but we're, what we need to do is prioritize where we can uh, contain the lines closest to those communities and push those uh, lines deep into the woods, up into the high country, away from where people live, keep people safe. Uh, so that's our priority work currently. Hey, hey Chief, to, uh, to, to Miguel's point and Dylan's point as well, they were just talking about air quality a few moments ago. Um, it's pitch black sometimes in the middle of the day, we've been told. We've seen some of these images. How is that air quality affecting your guys on the fire lines? Uh, we've had to take some precautions, certainly uh, on the air quality side. Uh, we usually run 16-hour shifts, uh, so folks have to uh, self-regulate, uh, be cautious, uh, understand where their health sits and uh, where their comfort is. Uh, we do the same thing when we're dealing with extreme heat conditions, uh, where we have to monitor rest uh, work ratios to ensure the health and safety of the firefighters themselves so we can keep people on the line. And Chief, I, I know the physical, there's the physical aspect of it, but what about the emotional aspect of your firefighters? I mean, a number of them have lost their own homes. They don't know how their families are doing. How are they holding up? Uh, we really have to focus on the humanity side mm -hmm. uh, of this equation and take care of our firefighters. Cri critical incident support teams have been deployed uh, by FEMA to support us on that front. Uh, we lost ourselves in our department. Uh, one of our district buildings, uh, so folks are displaced out of their work environment. Mm -hmm. We put them in hotels, and the next one, and they want to go back out there and fight fire. Uh, but we really got to make sure, uh, you know, folks are ready. Uh, we've got family members displaced also, so there's concerns there uh, while our firefighters are on the line. Right, so it's got to be front and foremost uh, to take care of our firefighters. Yeah. Uh, morale generally is, 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 is good, and we're holding strong. Chief Graff, uh, we're not with you physically, but we are there with you in spirit. Uh, best of luck to you, okay? Thank you, thank you. Thank you all. Thanks to all your men and women out there who are trying to get these things under control.